Hi everyone. I would like to welcome all of you to today's class. In this class, we are going to discuss about a very important concept that is Gauss's law and the first application of Gauss's law that is uh, derivation of expression for electric intensity at a point due to an infinitely long stride uniformly charged wire. So this is electric charge and electric field part 10. Okay, well, let's start today's class. Uh, first, we will discuss about uh, the Gauss's law statement. So according to Gauss's law, the total electric flux through uh, any closed surface that is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the net charge enclosed by the closed surface. According to Gauss's law, the total electric flux through any closed surface that is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the net charge. Net charge means algebraic sum of charges enclosed by the closed surface. Okay, let us prove the Gauss's law mathematical expression. Okay, first here, let us consider an isolated positive point charge plus Q. That is located at the center of a sphere. Plus Q is isolated positive point charge that is located exactly at the center of the sphere. Actually, this is a Gaussian surface. The Gaussian surface means a surface of any shape, any size, but it encloses at least one charge. That is the meaning of Gaussian surface. Gaussian surface means a surface of any shape, any size, but it encloses at least one charge. Okay. So here this is the Gaussian sphere plus Q is located exactly at the center of the Gaussian sphere. Now we can choose a small area on Gaussian uh, surface that is DS. So what is the direction of DS? DS vector is radially outwards. Normal, actually this is normal. Normal means that is imaginary perpendicular, imaginary perpendicular to the given surface and directed outwards. Okay. This is PS vector. Normal to this point. Let us consider this point as P O as the center. Okay. So what is the direction of electric intensity at point P? So that can be calculated by using a test charge. So a unit positive test charge plus Q naught is placed at the observation point P. So what happens due to this plus Q charge plus Q naught will experience the repulsive force. That means the electric field is also directed radially outwards. Okay. So even the direction of electric intensity at any point on the Gaussian surface that is radially outwards, even Ds vector is also radially outwards at any point on the Gaussian surface or Gaussian sphere. Okay, uh, we have the expression that is electric intensity at a point uh, due to isolated point charge. What is that? that is e is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. Okay, Q divided by R square. So R is the distance from 
isolated uh, positive point charged to the observation point. So here, plus Q is the location of point O, uh, P is the observation point. So electric intensity at point P due to plus Q at O, that is E is equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught Q divided by R squared. So the electric flux through the small surface Vs. Electric flux through a small surface area Vs. So V S. That is what is the mathematical expression for a small electric flux? Electric flux means the number of electric field lines passing. A penetrating normal number of electric field lines passing penetrating normal to the given surface that is the meaning of electric flux. So, the mathematical expression for electric flux through small surface d phi e is equal to e vector dot ds vector d phi e is equal to e vector dot ds vector. So, what is the meaning of dot product of two vectors? Dot product of two vectors actually that is a scalar that is given by the product of magnitude of two vectors and cosine of the angle in between them. So, dot product of two vectors means the product of magnitude of two vectors, magnitude of E vector is E, magnitude of DS vector is DS. And cosine of the a smaller angle in between them. So actually, here E vector is radially outwards, E vector is radially outwards, even DS vector is also radially outwards. So E vector that is parallel to DS vector. So E vector is parallel to DS vector. What is the angle in between them? That is zero, right? So here value of theta is zero, zero degree. So cos zero is one. So finally we will get d phi e is equal to e into ds. But actually here we want the total electric flux, total electric flux through the entire Gaussian sphere. Right? So call this as equation number one. So total electric flux through the entire Gaussian sphere. So that can be uh, determined so by integrating equation one on both sides. Integrating equation one on both sides. So after integration, we will get integration of d phi e that is equal to integration of d phi e. That is equal to integration of E into ds. Integration of d phi e is equal to integration of E into ds. Integration of d phi e that is phi e. And actually here E is constant. Uh, while integrating the constant term that should be taken as outside. So Actually, here the magnitude of electric intensity, magnitude of electric intensity at any point on the Gaussian sphere that is same because the observation points on the Gaussian sphere, those points are equidistant, equidistant from the point charge plus Q. So that is why the magnitude of electric intensity direction is radially outwards direction is radially outwards the magnitude of electric intensity at any point in the Gaussian sphere that is same because the observation points on the Gaussian sphere those points are equidistant from plus Q charge actually that is the radius of the Gaussian sphere so the expression is 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught Q divided by R squared what is the meaning of R? R is the radius of the Gaussian sphere. Okay, so here E is taken as outside. E 
integration of dl. So phi e is equal to what is the value of e? E value is 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught q divided by r square. So integration of ds, integration of ds, that is s. S means the total surface area of the Gaussian sphere. So what is the total surface area of the Gaussian sphere? Surface area of the Gaussian sphere, that is 4 pi r square. 4 pi r square, that is surface area of the Gaussian sphere. Now here, 4, 4 get cancelled, pi, pi cancelled, or even r square, r square also cancelled. So finally, we will get pi e, that is equal to q divided by epsilon naught. Okay. So that is the final expression. Actually, this is the mathematical expression for Gauss's law. Mathematical expression for Gauss's law. So this is the proof for Gauss's law. The total electric flux, total electric flux through any closed surface, total electric flux through any closed surface that is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times net charge, net charge enclosed by the closed surface. So this is the proof for Gauss's law. What is the statement? The total electric flux through any closed surface that is equal to that is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times 1 over epsilon naught times the net charge net charge enclosed by the enclosed by the closed surface this is Gaussian surface Gaussian surface means a surface of any shape any size but it encloses at least one charge okay after that, let us discuss about some examples for Gauss's law. So the first example uh, that is a closed surface encloses the charges. A closed surface encloses the charges plus Q1 minus q2 plus q3 and minus q4 okay so this is a closed surface this is a gaussian surface uh, encloses uh, four charges here so now apply the gauss's law to this closed surface so after applying the gauss's law uh, we will get phi e is equal to 1 divided by epsilon naught 1 over epsilon naught q means here the net charge net charge means algebraic sum of charges net charge means algebraic sum of charges enclosed by the enclosed by the Gaussian surface okay so algebraic sum of charges plus q1 minus q2 plus minus q4. So this is a mathematical expression for what? Total electric flux through this Gaussian surface. Suppose the Gaussian surface encloses an electric dipole. What is the meaning of electric dipole? Electric dipole means pair of equal and opposite charges separated by a small vector distance. So this is the Gaussian surface encloses an electric dipole. Now apply the Gaussian law to this Gaussian surface. So after applying the Gaussian law, <coughs> total electric flux that is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times the net charge enclosed by the closed surface. So here net charge, one is minus Q and another one is 
plus three plus two minus two cancel. So here the net electric flux through this Gaussian surface is zero. Okay. Suppose a Gaussian surface encloses hundred electric dipoles. Even in that case also, the total electric flux is zero. The next example. Uh, suppose a charged particle that is located exactly at the center of the cube. Suppose if a charged particle encloses charged particle is located exactly at the center of the cube. Okay, charge particle is located exactly at the center of the cube. Then what is the total electric flux through the entire cube? Actually here, uh, cube is the Gaussian surface. So the entire total electric flux through the Gaussian surface, that is phi E is equal to this is for the entire cube. This is for the entire cube. So phi is equal to 1 over epsilon naught time. The charge enclosed by the uh, Gaussian surface that is Q. So this is the total electric flux through the entire cube. Okay. Uh, suppose what is the uh, electric flux? Through just uh, one phase. So, how do you calculate electric flux through just one phase? Actually, torque is additive in nature, a uh, cube having total uh, six phases, right? So, charge contained or charge linked with just one phase is Q by six. So, Q by six plus Q by six plus Q by six plus Q by six. That is six times six into q by six. That is q. Q is the total charge. Total charge. So charge uh, contained in just one phase is q by six. So the electric flux uh, through one phase of a q. Electric flux through one phase of one phase. Just one phase of is phi e is equal to 1 over epsilon naught. So charge contained in just uh, one phase, one phase that is q by 6. So we will get here q divided by 6 epsilon naught. So what is the electric flux uh, through two phases? That is q by 6 plus q by 6. That is q divided by Q by 6 plus Q by 6, 2 times Q by 6, that is Q by 3. So phi is equal to Q divided by 3 F or not. Okay. So this is the third example. Fourth one. So let us consider here an isolated positive point charge plus Q uh, located exactly at the center of the sphere. Okay. What is the electric flux through the entire? Gaussian sphere that is very simple that is phi is equal to q divided by 1 over epsilon naught times the net charge enclosed by the Gaussian sphere. Okay, uh, suppose what is the electric flux through just off of the sphere? Off of the sphere, off of the sphere. The charge is Q by 2 divided by epsilon naught. So we will get uh, Q divided by 2 epsilon naught. So this is total electric flux through the entire Gaussian sphere. This is electric flux through only half of the sphere. So these are uh, some particular examples of Gaussian law. So after that, we will discuss about the first very important application of Gauss's law 
actually that is third a very important five mark derivation in this chapter that is derivation of expression for derivation of expression for electric intensity at a point due to an infinitely long stride uniformly charged wire so derivation is very important for phi and this is the first application of gauss's law what is that derivation of expression for electric intensity due to an uh, infinitely long try uniformly charged wire okay first let's consider a long try very thin thin infinitely infinitely long try uniformly charged wire so suppose here the electrons are removed from the thin wire what happens the wire gets positively charged that is spreads over the entire length of the wire actually this is a linear charge distribution the charge spreads over charge spreads over one dimensional line or curve in space this is the linear charge distribution it is actually surrounded by electric field so we have to calculate uh, what amount of electric field electric intensity produces uh, the uniformly uh, charged infinitely uniformly charged wire okay so it is having uh, the linear uh, charge density that is considered that is the lambda lambda is the linear charge density that is charge per unit mass so after that here uh, we can choose a gaussian cylinder this is very important consideration let us choose an imaginary gaussian cylinder or uh, taking the line charge distribution that is the axis line charge distribution that is the axis axis of imaginary gaussian cylinder so what is this this is imaginary gaussian cylinder so the imaginary gaussian cylinder that is having three phases okay uh, number one this is upper flat uh, circular surface and this is lower flat circular surface and this one is the curved surface this is upper flat circular surface lower flat circular surface and this one is the curved surface so let us consider this surface as s1 this one as s2 and this one as s3 so uh, s3 is upper flat circular surface s2 is lower flat circular surface s1 is the curved surface so after that we can choose a small surface in s1 and this is ds1 okay so what is the direction of ds1 vector that is the direction of normal okay what is the meaning of normal normal is imaginary perpendicular imaginary perpendicular to the given surface and it is always directed outwards so here this is the imaginary perpendicular directed outwards directed outwards imaginary perpendicular directed outwards okay so what is this this is d s2 vector d s2 vector okay right 
So what is the direction of electric intensity at this point? What is the direction of electric intensity at this point? So how do you find out electric intensity? So first let us take a unit positive test charge that is plus Q0. If it is placed at this point, then plus Q0 will experience the repulsive force due to this positive charge plus Q0 will experience repulsive force. So this is the direction of electric intensity at this point. So even uh, that is also directed radially out. So or in the radius of the Gaussian cylinder. So here E vector is radially outwards, even this is V S1. V S1 vector that is also directed radially outwards. After that, let us consider a small surface in S3. This is D S3. D S3. That is small area on S3, upper flat circular surface. So, what is the direction of uh, D S3 vector? So, D S3 vector that is vertically upwards. So that is the direction of normal. Normal means imaginary perpendicular to the given surface directed outwards. Okay. So this is the direction of D S3, D S3 vector. And what is the direction of electric intensity at that point? So a unit positive test charge plus Q0 is placed here due to this positive charge. Plus Q0 will experience the repulsive force that is moving radially outwards. So this is the direction of electric intensity at this point. Okay. So after that, now we can choose a small surface on S2. That is D S2. D S2. That is small surface in S2. So S2 is lower flat, lower flat circular surface. So what is the direction of uh, D S2 vector? So this is the lower flat uh, circular surface. So now this is imaginary perpendicular to S2. Imaginary perpendicular so directed outwards. So here D S2 vector is vertically downwards. Right. So this is the direction of D S2 vector. So uh, a unit positive test charge plus Q0 is placed here. Uh, again, due to this positive charge, plus Q0 will experience the repulsive force. Okay. So the direction of electric intensity is radially outwards. So this diagram is very very important. So after that let us consider the length of this imaginary Gaussian cylinder that is there. So now tell me um, what is the charge enclosed by? What amount of charge enclosed by the imaginary Gaussian cylinder? So actually the linear charge density lambda is charge contained per unit length. That means the length of the Gaussian cylinder. So the total charge enclosed by total uh, charge, total charge enclosed, enclosed by the Gaussian cylinder E. The total charge. Enclosed by the Gaussian cylinder E. Uh, Q is equal to Q is equal to lambda into L. So call this equation number one. So this is the net charge, total charge enclosed by the Gaussian cylinder. So after that, uh, we have to calculate the total electric flux. 
total electric uh, flux through the entire Gaussian cylinder. Total electric flux through the entire Gaussian cylinder. So total electric flux circle on integral means that surface is closed. This is total electric flux. It is a mathematical expression. Flux is measured by taking the product of electric field and area. Electric field vector and area vector. So this is the total electric flux through the entire Gaussian cylinder. Actually, that is divided into three parts. One is the flux linked with uh, the curved surface and the flux linked with uh, lower flat circular surface and another one is the flux, electric flux linked with upper flat circular surface. Okay, first one is flux linked with the curved surface is integration of E vector dot D as one vector. Integration of E vector dot D as one vector. Plus, second one is integration of the flux linked with lower flat circular surface. Integration of E vector dot D as two vector. E vector dot D as two vector. Next, plus third one that is integration of E vector dot integration of E vector. This is D as two vector. So this is the flux linked with uh, upper flat circular surface that is the integration of E vector dot D as three vector. Okay. So after that, uh, remove the dot and vector sign. So what is the meaning of dot uh, product of two vectors? That is given by the product of magnitude of two vectors and cosine of the uh, smaller angle uh, in between that. So integration of here, E vector dot ds1 vector magnitude is E ds1 cos theta. What is the value of theta? Theta means the angle between E vector and ds1 vector. So E vector is radially outwards. ds1 vector is also radially outwards. What is the angle in between that? That is 0. So cos 0 degree plus. So integration of E vector dot ds2 vector that is product of magnitude of two vectors that means E into ds2 and the cosine of the angle between E vector, E vector and ds2 vector. What is the angle in between E vector and ds2 vector that is 90 degree. So this is cos 90 plus integration of circle on integral circle on integral so e d s3 e d s3 cos what is the angle between uh, e vector and d s3 vector that is 90 so this is cos 96 okay so this is actually the total electric flux through the entire gaussian cylinder so actually here the second term goes to zero because cos 90 is zero. So even third term also goes to zero because again cos 90 that is zero. But cos zero is one. Cos zero is one, and E is the magnitude of electric intensity at any point on the curved surface that is same because. The points on the curved surface that is equidistant from the line charge distribution. That means E is constant, that is taken as 
of pi. So E E integration of D L one or zero is one. Okay. So the total electric flux integration of E vector dot D L vector that is equal to that is total electric flux. Actually, this is phi E. Total electric flux symbol is phi E. So phi E is equal to integration of E vector dot ds vector. So this is E integration of D as one, right? So integration of E vector dot ds vector is E integration of ds one. That is S one. What is the meaning of S one? That is surface area. That is area of curved surface. S one is area area of curved surface. So what is the area of curved surface? Area of curved surface is two pi r into l. Two pi r into l. This is the area of curved surface, and this is the total electric flux through the entire Gaussian cylinder. So now uh, we can apply the Gauss's law. So according to Gauss's law, according to the Gauss's law, the total electric flux through total electric flux through any closed surface, total electric flux through any closed surface that is equal to one over epsilon naught times the net charge, net charge enclosed by the closed surface. Now, I call this as equation number two. I call this as equation number three. This is equation, equation number two. So now equation, equations so, uh, one, and two in equation number three. Equation one and two in equation three. So then we will get phi e is integration of e vector dot ds vector. That value is e into two pi r into l. That is equal to q. What is the value of q? That is lambda l. Lambda L divided by epsilon naught. So L L will get cancelled. Remaining we will get E is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught into half. Okay. So that is the mathematical expression for electric intensity due to this is a mathematical expression for electric field. Electric intensity is due to and infinitely, infinitely long, dry, uniformly charged wire. So this mathematical expression is very, very important. That is e is equal to lambda divided by uh, two pi epsilon naught into r. So how does the electric field depends on the distance? The so electric field is inversely proportional to inversely proportional to distance from observation point to the line charge distribution so if the distance gradually increases what happens to the electric field strength the electric field strength that is gradually decreases that means electric field strength near the line charge distribution that is much stronger as compared to electric field strength away from the line charge distribution. So in vector form, in vector form, so uh, this expression that is written in the form of E vector is equal to, E vector is equal to lambda divided by two pi epsilon naught or into n cap. E vector, is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught 
lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught. E vector is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught or into n cap. n cap is a unit vector, indicates the direction of electric field. So, what is the direction of electric field? What is the direction of electric field? That is radially outwards. Radially outwards. So, this is about derivation of expression for. Uh, electric field due to an infinitely long side uh, uniformly charged wire, and this mathematical expression very important it is E is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught into R. Okay, thank you.